uh, Valerie Martin, finance director at Autodesk, uh, is going to share with us uh, her practical experience. Valerie, you're welcome. Uh, the stage is yours. Thank you, Larissa. Well, um, I'm super excited to be here. Um, to give you a little bit of background, I oversee a, a team of financial professionals, mostly finance business partnering or business controlling. I do have a team in, um, in Nordic's region, so very interesting about that. And what do I do is I manage a team that oversee go-to-market strategy and also all the industry teams. Um, they're all across the world and I help them drive and partner with them through a business model transition. So let's get started about why data-driven FP&A is important. So next slide. So when you look at the concept of the why, I like to do the rules of tree of, okay, what's going on in a business environment? So our current business environment right now or organization that we're working on, depending on what size or um, industry, is we want to stand out of the crowd to make this um, and make a huge impact on what we do in new technology, data, and in offering tools and what they do to help them drive to the next level or go against competition is really looking at insights that other companies don't have. Then the next concept is that if you look at today's data world, there's a different level of complexity with big data. So you have data that's beyond PNL or beyond financial traditional data, and you find yourself in an environment where there's many possibilities of performance metrics, and you'll really quickly realize that not all data is relevant or important. And this is where you'll see a lot of the analysis where some of them makes, brings value, some not, and where you can focus your time. And what we do in finance, if you look at FP&A, our strength was always about pulling data and multiple system, gathering insight. And this is where we help organizations to be more intelligent because we help them determine what data is useful and you know, we need to make sure there's one source of truth. And this is where, as an example, if you look at uh, being a finance business partner, this is where, if you look at how we could help streamline data, how we could put in a common tool, how can we educate them about the new matrix, how can we drive adoption, and this is where we could focus more on actually insights. And again, this ties nicely with a presentation from Carl that to get insights, you need to build that relationship. So next slide. So now, okay, so we looked at the long time. So what do we need to do as a finance professional in fp &A? So I like to look at, at two lens. One of them is about, okay, what do we really need from our data? So if you look at our data, we need to make sure that if you look at access, well, can people acquire the data they need and is it accessible? So it could be data when you're acquiring a new company or data doesn't exist yet or you're going through a business model transition. Access is really key in your data. The other one is making sure it's reliability. So is your data accurate? Does it lead to the right people to the right questions? So this is where it becomes very important to say, okay, I got data, but does that answer the questions that you need? The next one is the speed. So how quickly can you answer this question? It's no use if you have the answer of the data, but it's gonna be in two months from now when you have to make an important decision on either pricing or channel like tomorrow. The speed of data is something that we need to really to make sure. And last but not least is the clarity. So do people really understand what you're trying to say and why? And education is really key and it's actually part of our role in fp and and how we build data. It's not used that they have KPIs, but they don't understand what it means. An example could be, do you have retention rate that includes churn or is it net or is it gross and how does that work? So this is really another key of it. So then if you look at all of these elements, what's the challenges that we have and how do we help overcome these challenges? So the challenges is you end up with a lot of different metrics and they all mean different things at different markets or stakeholders we have. Another one was about, you know, there's different audience. You need to adapt the common language or the same, you know, uh, what does it mean, so, same uh, source of truth for your audience. Uh, the communication of it is really key. So be able to that relationship is important. And conflicted metrics, just I've experienced this actually in my latest quarterly business review where there's matrix where they're tracking performance where they're conflicting. So this is where a p and could actually make a good impact. Um, in this example, it was creating volume where we're tracking the total users. And another one was after, it was ARPU where it's your average revenue um, rate per user. Well, you know, we were creating different behaviors as we were driving volume or pricing depending, depending of the 
price points of your products. And last but not least is also understanding the strategy. So it's great to have great data that is accessible, reliable, speed, and clarity, but it isn't tied to the strategy. So this is something that we need to be very uh, aware of. So now let's move down to the next slide. And what I've done is actually looked at uh, how can we be good finance business partnering? And actually, so I'm going to cover how you could lead a team of finance business partners. So if you look at you know, financial and not financial data, like it's really important on the number one is how do you start a conversation with your stakeholders? So this is really where you build the relationship, you understand what they care about, and this is what's gonna allow you to gather your baseline data. Know your data and know your audience or the Q for your stake. The second bullet is identify your goals, plan, performance, and it comes back also how you could package it. So it goes beyond of giving you your dashboard, but how can you promote your story, your insights, really understand um, Telling the insights over the data and telling the story is really key. And this is where you can actually promote the value of the FBP or a finance business partnering. Successes is really good to share your success, but it's also good to share your learnings because this is where you're going to start building trust. Uh, deliver insights, telling the storyteller. So when you tell the story, um, what I like to do is not put five numbers. I always like the rule of three. Three big numbers, keep it concise, keep it straight to the point. Um, and last but not least, real-time insights make sense. So now that we're in a fast pace of data is making sure you're driving to self-serve, making sure everything makes sense, it's more accessible, and you keep it very streamlined. I like to actually do a dashboard where people could drill down versus keeping it like too much data overload. Interactive process is very, very important. So this is where we need to be adaptable and make sure that we learn about the problem we have. And once we solve this problem that we're trying to, you know, with the problem with the business, is then how do we get, you see the business to evolve in stages? And how can we eventually figure out which one that we need to change? Um, coming from a company that did a business model transition where eventually going through uh, a different business model, revenue became less important, but volume was. And now that we're out of it, we need to make sure our revenue is there so we're actually a sustainable business model. So it's really understanding the stages and how it works with the business, and it starts with actually a conversation. Be curious and engage that drive a lot with what actually Carl said, is being very motivated and ask questions. Focus on the why versus the what. Okay, so next slide. So this one is about same concept. So if you're in a role where you're beyond finance business partnering and you are actually driving the business, but you're leading a team that's doing the same thing, there's a role that we need to play as leaders. And it's really making sure we create this culture where we make these decisions based on facts and no longer your gut feeling. So I've often seen things where your gut is actually telling you where you think it's going to be, but this is where we bring value when we put facts beyond what our business or stakeholders things or facts are. And sometimes we can cover a lot of things that we actually, you know, didn't think it could be um, the right thing. And this actually, you need to have a mindset shift. And this is where when you lead teams, make sure you tied um, revenue, uh, not revenue, but recognitions, you know, make sure they're actually recognized on anything that's actually driven through decisions. Um, one thing also with making decisions is make sure we get away from consensus and more on making decisions of agree, disagree, or leverage advice. It helps you just move forward. It's actually something that I thought it was very useful. Focus on your soft skills. I call them power skills. So communication, make sure you understand the why, build into trust, and behavior is key. So when you hire talent to make sure they're actually more focused on also beyond the why, but also how do you do things. Training is really key. So there's new tools, there's new data, there's new transitions, there's new data of when things change. So training either your staff also to know how to drive it and escape it, but also your stakeholders. It's, we have a role to educate our team. You need to be open. You need to learn how to make mistakes, learn, creep to it. Create this psychology safety with your teams is very, very key. And it's sharing how you evolve within, you know, understanding the business and how they should do the same thing you'll be surprised what they could actually, you know, uncover and help you be actually more productive. Build trust is really key. It works like in anything you do, either with your partners or with your team. And last but not least is really setting ambition goals. And when I'm saying ambitious goals, yes, okay, your team will drive, you know, let your team drive outcome and analytics and insights. They may not be all achievable, but the key thing here is they're going to focus on the right thing. And yet you may be very impressive with the results they're going to drive. So this is the end of my presentation and I'm open to commentary. Thank you.